AI-led business strategy. Now, thanks to the pandemic, artificial intelligence, AI is not the future, it is here and now. Uh, should you look to implement uh, natural language processing or speech recognition or machine learning solutions because your competitor is doing so or because it sounds cool, does AI really add value to your organizations by only freeing up the time for innovation and enhance human creativity or can it achieve even more? So this is what we'll discuss uh, in this panel discussion on AI-led business strategy. Uh, this is a, a discussion that has been moderated by Mr. Manush Desai, Global Chief Information Officer, Stellar Technologies. And the panelists on this uh, panel discussion are Mr. Binod Bhatt, Chief Information Officer, Vistala Airlines, Mohammed Irshad, Director IT, CDIO, uh, Shradul Amarchand um, um, Mangaldas, uh, Manoj Pradhan, Head of DIO, APAC, Kimberly Clark Corporation, Umesh Bhavkar, Senior Director, IT Systems, uh, Synchron Technologies, Rami Ayub, Chief Digital Information Officer, Spark Tech Solutions, and Tushar Zadeh, CIO and CDO, Origin Pharmaceuticals Services Limited. I'll hand it over to uh, Mr. Desai to take this discussion forward. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to um, the panel discussion, uh, AI lead, uh, AI led business uh, strategies. Um, this is going to be part of the CIO 1000 um, APAC 2021 uh, event. Uh, pretty interesting uh, discussion. I'm kind of looking forward to having with a such an esteemed panel uh, that uh, we have here. Um, we we uh, when we when we look at AI or when we talk about AI, uh, you know there is uh, tons of uh, discussion that happens or tons of news that happens in the industry. Uh, but I think as this group, uh, we wanted to put a framework around uh, you know why AI is important or uh, you know how does it directly impact you know the digital transformation or how does it uh, at the end of the day impact uh, the business strategy. So that's what this uh, discussion um is all about and uh, let me quickly go ahead and get started with uh, manoj manoj pradhan uh, manoj if you uh, would love to answer this question on why ai in uh, business strategy uh thanks thanks manoj i think it's a wonderful question to uh, kick start uh all of us uh, we work for successful companies today uh great products uh, services which we sell in the market and in return we make profit right and some of the companies are market leader co-leader and the followers in the industry when i meet actually cxos i always ask one question will your company exist will your company survive after one year three years five years or ten years down the line okay and if the answer is yes okay i ask think again right double click on why you said yes uh, if you look at by and large all successful companies uh, today are primarily focused on efficiencies they have comprehensive processes well defined metrics very reliable technologies and of course run by great people when we see any kpis performing uh, in the business above the threshold it brings us big smile right remember these are the short term happiness but if you want to see your company successful tomorrow and the years ahead, uh, we have to focus on effectiveness, right? Uh, find the purpose of the business in every role by every employee, please, and look for the opportunity to maximize that business value, okay? And our brains are habituated in such a way that it always towards the act of efficiency. And mm -hmm. now shifting uh, the focus from efficiency to effectiveness is really really challenging right one brain yeah. we have limited thoughts and all of that but this can be achieved with superpower right which we call as ai and in this fast evolving business environment i think ai needs to be paired with ability to make more frequent more responsive and more accurate business decision ai should be used as a driver for the digital transformation to make the future, right? So sure. I, I, I think actually I answered your question well, Manoj. Sure, 
thanks, thanks, Manoj, uh, uh, for that insight. Uh, you know, the AI, um, you know, should be driving uh, business transformation. Thank you. That helps. Um, I'm going to uh, jump uh, quickly into my next question. And uh, Vinod, who's the uh, chief information officer at uh, Vistara, uh, Vistara Airlines. Uh, Vinod, uh, how is uh, AI uh, accelerating digital transformation? Okay, thank you, Manoj, for having me. Again, it is a privilege to be among these esteemed panelists. Uh, See, if you, uh, if I take the discussion further, what Manoj said and try to dissect it, you know, you know, AI is uh, obviously a term, a strategy, which is more linked with the business strategy. It is not a technology. I think they want to first uh, demystify that myth that a lot mm -hmm. of people. So you have to first see that how AI is going to help your business KPIs. That is the you know, I would say 10,000 feet statement. But when you drill down that further, that what divisions are we talking about? What departments are we talking about? What businesses are we talking about? And what KPIs are we talking about? I think it has to be drilled down to the next level. So once you look at it, because AI cannot be applicable everywhere. Yes, mm -hmm. AI has its multiple facets. AI can be used very well through automation. You can actually do a lot of things. AI can be used to launch your new product services. AI can be used to because that will help you to identify the opportunities or it can help you to improve your existing product or services. But the fundamental question of AI is the data because AI without data has no meaning and sure. right data. So I think the fundamental pillar or the corner store of digital transformation for AI is data right data right set of data right set of data for the right business processes and which is going to be potential candidate for the impact so business impact is very important if you are not able to show the business impact you are not going to get approval for the ai project in the in the in your boardroom that's not going to happen so you need to be very conscious of the fact that when you identify processes or the projects you need to articulate very well that how it is going to change my business when i say change the business it may be making it more efficient it may be more helping in the decisioning of the business whether it is a planning side sales side marketing side or helping you to get into new territories altogether which was not there at all so when you look at so data is fundamental very important then obviously the algorithm which you want to build on top of it so you want to build an algorithm which is you know available in the market or you want to build an algorithm which is proprietary to you and then you need to really see that how to protect my IPR, how to file the patent so that nobody gets into it. I think that is that will vary from you know, organization to organization. And third thing, uh, which I probably will want to put on the table is AI strategy is a horizontal. AI strategy is not a vertical. It is a horizontal which actually is applicable across. But will it be a you know, stepwise process? Answer is yes. You can't rock the boat and say that now AI has arrived, let us do it. So you have to, but you have to identify which are those pilot divisions, pilot processes, but set up the full infrastructure. If needed, you need to probably set up a center of excellence. You need to set up a dedicated team, which is the right combination of business and technology people. It's like setting up your agile. When people were moving from conventional waterfall to agile, agile there yeah. are a lot of roadblocks. A lot of thinking was to be changed because people never were used to have three weeks of sprint, two weeks of sprint. That was not possible earlier. But now through this, there's a similar similar uh, concept here also, that where you need to set up a different team thinking from the organization perspective, which mm -hmm. will help whole organization. So I'll take a pause here, Manoj. That's how the digital transformation will help. No, uh, very, very insightful. Um, and, and, and thank you for this. Obviously, you know, KPI is the right thing to do. And then, um, you know, you bringing in the pers perspective of, you know, how organizations move from uh, waterfall to agile, very relevant. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, that helps. Um, Umesh, I'm going to jump uh, to you, um, if you will. So, um, Umesh is a senior director, uh, IT systems. Um, with uh, Synergon, how do you pronounce it, Umesh? I think I'm Synergon. Synergon. All right. Um, so uh, while you know uh, we've had you know insights into you know kind of the benefits, if you will, or why we should be doing it, I I want to ask you a question around what, what do you think are the challenges uh, in uh, implementing uh, AI? 
Well, uh, thank you, Manoj. Thank you for mm -hmm. having me uh, on this call uh, with the esteemed panelists. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. I um, take care of uh, Mesh Patra, take care of uh, IT systems and uh, information security for Cinecron. And Cinecron is um, a leading digital transformation consulting firm focused mm -hmm. on financial services customers, right? So we are primarily, uh, this topic is very apt to me because we are helping our clients uh, to do their digital transformation in the financial services. Many of them are already at different stages of uh, digital transformation. We help them accelerate their journeys. And uh, the COVID situation has just made that possible uh, primarily uh, everybody is now at different stages of uh, digital transformation. So for AI, AI we use extensively along with um, blockchain, along with other emerging technologies. Now we use primarily six different technologies of uh, AI, including natural language processing, NLP and NLG, right? Data science, robotic process automation, uh, cognitive machine learning and robo advisors. Some of these are the technologies that we use uh, in order to help our customers to accelerate their journey. Now, my role is uh, managing internal IT systems, and we also help our customers, our uh, client-facing teams are actually working towards um, implementing AI for the, the business side. Okay. Now, there are several benefits that we see in using AI, right? So. For example, internally within IT, uh, we have deployed AI-based chatbots for uh, our global IT service desk operations. Now, uh, this has reduced significantly the turnaround time. Those routine queries, questions um, that probably can instantly be answered by a trained bot using AI, right? Those those will help us reduce that unnecessary load on our service desk team, right? So, and at the same time, it gives a very quick turnaround time for the end users. They don't have to log a traditional ticket, where, wait for an engineer to be assigned and solve the problems. So we have seen about 15% reduction in our global IT service desk tickets just by using the chatbots, AI-based chatbot, based on Azure plot platform that we use. These are mainly the Q&A kind of bots, right? So you train the uh, AI bot with a set of uh, questions, right? Machine learning primarily, and they will learn by themselves and most repetitive questions can be answered. And the integration of these chatbots with our rest of the IT systems can give you live real-time data. For, for example, someone wants to know what their leave balance is. Right? Somebody wants to know um, any other information that is there in the system without logging into the system, right? just by chatting with the bot. We've also used AI for cybersecurity, which can drastically improve and ensure security in transactions can be taught on patterns of hackers usually used to create layered security at systems. There are a lot of hackers use this patterns. Right? So we use the other way, which is use this AI-based security intelligence and threat detection preventive. Uh, so when you use this AI in the, the, the cybersecurity space, we have seen a lot of benefits with respect to uh, reduction uh, in the zero-day attacks by getting that intelligence, by querying different sources. So there are several benefits of using AI. And Manoj, you talked about what are the challenges with respect to deployment of the AI, right? right. So there are several challenges uh, with respect to the deployment of AI. Now, first is there is the skilled manpower, skilled trained staff that you need to have in order to make sure that you know you can deploy it. Because these are not these are emerging technologies. Although we have this uh, in the form of an accelerator that we use, which are basically uh, use cases. But the, it requires a lot of uh, uh, understanding of the technologies. You need to have the people who are trained. Um, so there is the skill set that is required to implement it. There is a lot of unstructured data, 
When we talk about unstructured data, it is volume, velocity, and variety of the data, right? So mining of that data and getting some kind of intelligence requires high compute power. There are, um, you need to have a lot of compute power, algorithms to break uh, some of these um, the questions and, and derive at the efficiency. And then the, there is a problem with respect to the bias problem, what you call. Bias problem is primarily the nature of the AI system depends on the amount of the data it is trained on. Hence, the ability to gain good data is the solution uh, to the good AI system. So these are some of the challenges that we think uh, are uh, today in implementing AI-based uh, strategy. Uh, it could be a business strategy or AI-based solutions within the organization. These yep. are some of the challenges. Yep, uh, Umesh, uh, thank you. Um, very valid points. Uh, you know, bias um, is something that I think all of us uh, if you will at some point in time uh, kind of either struggle with and uh, it's going to be our systems as well which is going to be struggling with so uh, very valid point i'm going to um, you know uh, move on to tushar um, tushar is the cdio and cdo at uh, green pharmaceuticals uh, services limited uh, tushar uh, a quick question uh, and and this is going to be about you know what are the three steps uh, you know, in adopting a successful implementation uh, of AI. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, so thank you so much for, for making me a panelist to this such an esteemed panel. Um, so by the way, I come from a company called Origin Pharmaceuticals. Origin. Okay. <laughs> no, no problem. It, it happens to be first time. You and I had the same problem. All right. So um, we, we are a group. We are from Dr. Reddy's group uh, as a pharmaceutical company. We are the services wing of, of Dr. Reddy's. Uh, yeah, so uh, for the three steps perspective, just before we jump to that, I was actually part of one of the sections from McKinsey, and I could read that 72% of the organizations in the world do not know what to do with the data tsunami after digital transformation, mm -hmm. right? And many of us are in the same boat as, as we speak today, right? Uh, so definitely a very interesting topic of how, how do we uh, lay the foundation or the framework for for business strategy, which is AI led, right? So I think it was very interesting the topic what we all are actually discussing about. Um, from the, uh, I would actually take some uh, inputs from Vinod you know, how he has mentioned that the paradigm shift from a CEO has has actually changed that he doesn't want a digital team to be looked at as a cost center. He wants us to be looked as a profit center. And how do we do so? Yes, there are multiple opportunities, multiple ways of doing so. But AI, uh, AI to the next level, ML to the next level, DL. Is, is the way forward, is one of the greatest technologies and greatest application what we can actually use. So if you, coming back to your question, uh, those three steps, what you had actually asked for. Um, so I would actually brief it into three high level buckets. Uh, one is deriving or identifying the right use cases. Many a times it happens that we try to implement uh, a technology where it is not really fitting it. So we need to identify the right use case where AI ML kind of a technology can be used uh, next is defining the right architecture. In terms of architecture, now this is I'm talking about from the IT perspective, from the digital perspective. Where will you save your raw data? What will be your visualization layer? Uh, uh, and what will be the next level of transformation? What you want to do with the data? Your, how much data massaging you want to do? Right? And the final one is to drive actionable insights, not just insights. We need to have actionable insights. Um, and so the North Star for, for AI-led business strategy should be having prescriptive analytics, which can, which can actually drive actionables and sometimes even take actions based on some rules, right? Also, um, just to add one more step, I, I would call it as step zero, is to start building a culture and, and to show the management and even all the CXO forums that, hey, look, this is the art of possible. Many a times uh, we coming from traditional Indian setup, uh, we have a baggage of old uh, IT named as, uh, named as IT, where we are just supposed to fix computers and access a service, right? So the change in mindset is extremely important. I call it IQ to DQ, how you change the IT quotient to digital quotient, and then bring about the change for by showing them the art of possible. That is step zero. I hope that answers. Yeah, it, 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 it does, Tushar. Thank you. Um for uh, helping us uh, articulate uh, 
on this particular question. Um, Rami, I'm going to kind of come to you for uh, the next question. Obviously, Rami is the Chief Digital Officer, Spark Tech Solutions, Digital and Information Officer, Spark Tech Solutions. Uh, Rami, the the question uh, would love for you to answer is: Are there any elements of risk involved in uh, AI implementation? Thanks, Manuj, and I would like also to thank all the panelists for this useful inputs. Uh, today, uh, you know, AI it has a big trend in the market, and uh, I find many summits, many occasions, many events, they are involving AI. Okay, uh, today we have in region, uh, we have the Dubai Expo, so uh, AI is a big part section there also. What is the future of AI, the, the, the right best practice of AI, how AI involve in IoT, uh, smart cities, and so on. Uh, as all of you know, AI is not born uh, just today or yesterday. It's been uh, since uh, last uh, century, from 60, uh, early 64. So, but to us in simple form. So by time, AI is gradually uh, develop itself, enhance itself, uh, go more advanced as most uh, emerging technologies growing as well. So here, AI, as you know, uh, we are dealing with a systematic and uh, 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 algorithms okay, to build decision making, uh, what should be doing next, and uh, what is the proper uh, prediction for uh, any occasion. So here we need to be very careful, okay, because we are dealing with a system, not with a human sense, which react immediately from uh, any occasion or any events. So here, uh, AI, it should have a clear input, a clear uh, source of uh, information. Uh, I had an article uh, last week, uh, okay, about data as a new soil, okay. so. Uh, providing the right data and you have a clear data right source to the ai then ai can be beneficial for you without that tool without that source ai is useless so here designing and implementing ai we need to be very careful we need to look to all risk aspects what is the output from this build ai solution so here i can uh, categorize uh, uh, the risk here that the accuracy of the data, how accurate is your data? You need to do a best practice in your data by training the data, give the right uh, structure of your data. So AI can understand and can the algorithm built on that one can give you the, uh, uh, the expected value. Also here, the format of your data. Today, you are not dealing only with the structured data from any database. Today, with the big data, with this open in the market, uh, you are dealing with several formats. You can uh, grab information from videos, from voice, pictures. Uh, today, we have also deep fake technology. So how can you make that uh, uh, information from that one accurate? Also, AI used in security, okay? So building the right analytics skill for AI to understand what type of threats it's dealing with the breaches and so on. So if it is not to train the properly, so you are opening gap to your organization. Also, okay, uh, you need to put, uh, AI is not giving the, you the whole story. So once the AI, and I talk here particularly with machine learning, for example, okay, when you extract a dashboard, uh, a report, analytic report, uh, business intelligence, for example, so here, the decision maker or the stakeholder, uh, they don't understand the technical skills. They need to see a, a business uh, a value, a business language. So here, the solution or AI product should give you the readful and, uh, and build for you a story for your data. So you have analytic data, you have a report, but what is the story about this data? So we need to write a proper story so the decision making can build their strategy based on this input. You know, today we are open, okay? And especially with this pandemic, people are forced to work remotely and collaborative tools are there in the place. So how you let AI uh, uh, support you in this one? 
when you are dealing with uh, with open marketplace so the competitors are very high so you need to have a right vision about the market about uh, the analytics you are getting from the your data how the data are uh, feeding your system and so on so i will not make it long okay in risk because it is wide range okay risk from all aspects you have to look but uh, we need to be very careful because at the end you are dealing with the system not mm -hmm. with the human so your system should understand what you are feeding it what is the right way uh, you should give it you should understand the algorithm before your system shall be understand it so building the right algorithm what you are expecting to go what you are expecting to reach so built on that one you have a, a value of your build solution Thank sure, you. Uh, sure, Rami, that definitely uh, helps. Uh, Shahad, I'm kind of uh, going to come to you next, which is, a, you know, can you tell us how artificial intelligence is delivering business impact? Uh, you know, I guess the broader question is, is it improving customer satisfaction, revenue growth, uh, productivity, efficiency, or cost, or other? Sure. First and foremost, Manoj, thanks for inviting me to this important discussion with the esteemed panelist and asking such a relevant question. But before I get into it, let me take a step back and provide few insights of AI impact. Uh, some of the research says that the value creation of artificial intelligence by 2030 would be in the range of around 13 trillion US dollar. And almost all industries will have AI use cases and they will have the positive business impact. Second, McKinsey report says that uh, it will also have an impact on the job market. On one hand, it will end up uh, creating a lot of jobs in the tune of around 800 million and will also result in losing the same amount of jobs in the tune of 400 to 800 millions by 2030. And routine and repetitive jobs will have the largest impact. Um, Coming back to the question, uh, AI technology has definitely a potential to deliver business impacts on almost all the areas, uh, be it uh, like our other esteemed panelist members mentioned that people are using NLP technologies and which is actually helping uh, them to increase the customer connect. Uh, those essentially end up resulting into increasing customer satisfactions. Uh, similarly, the other panelist also mentioned uh, that implementing the data science initiatives with prescription analysis uh, embedded with machine learning. These can also help providing actionable insights and uh, suggest business to help them in taking decisions. Uh, these can result into increasing revenue and growth. Uh, the other important element which I would like to share with, uh, with the example of my own firm, our, our own firm is uh, improving uh, productivity, efficiency and saving cost. Uh, so, in law firms, so I, I, I'm coming from a, India's largest law firm, uh, typically lawyers spend a lot of time in uh, working on all the documents. Uh, so firstly, what they do is uh, they need to perform the due diligence on a lot many cases that they receive and th that data sets is actually in the tune of gigabytes. And it is a time consuming process. Uh, by using AI-based technologies, uh, this type of due diligence process can be relatively done quickly, and it can save uh, the time in the tune of around 60% of their time in performing due diligence work. Uh, the second use case that I see is, uh, again, in our firm, uh, before that document is created and, uh, sorry, before the document has been sent to the customer, uh, it needs to be finally validated validated to make sure that it is an error free it is proofreaded and all of it there are technologies available uh, again ai based technologies which actually intelligently find issues in the document and it also provides the recommendation hey look these are the places in your document which are having the issues so ai and it it end up saving around 60 to 70 percent of their time in doing these type of work uh, so ai is actually impacting as a whole not into say our firm but as i mentioned like some of the research says that it will have an impact to all the firms so we truly see that uh, 
today AI is really making a big change uh, in almost all the industries and it will continue to do the same thing. Thanks. I hope I was able to answer your question, Manoj. Yep, thanks. Uh, th uh, thanks, Rishad. Very, very, uh, very useful um insights that that you provided thank you for that um Vinod, i'm going to come to you next and uh, you know if you can help us uh, with you know what are the tangible uh, benefits your organization has written as due to uh, ai implementation yeah i think say manoj uh, from uh, implementation perspective I, I, all of us spoke about that ai maturity is a journey it is not a discipline destination i think all of us it is a long term plan it is not going to happen in six months project done and dusted on oh, that's not true the reason is because there is i think people talked about data so right data correct data quality data integrated data where you have what the siloed corrected within a business unit or across the organization so that itself is a big task second is what are the services which are going to build on top of data who are going to consume the data what is the data governance rules so, and the whole data strategy comes into the place. I think that is very important because you may do more harm to your organization by letting lose the data in the wrong hands. It's very important because you are at the end of the day responsible for the data which you are owning it. So it's very important to build the right governance, security, compliance as part of it. So from that perspective, uh, uh, the journey is that the use cases which are particularly applicable in our industries for example, uh, you can make the right decisions about a customer, you know, because the customers are all across, right? They can enter the airlines industry from multiple channels, whether it is the web, it is a mobile, any channel. And uh, the data may not be perfect. So how do you really identify those customers? How do you make sure that the customer is identified properly, customer is served properly, and with the right preferences, right loyalty program right tear which the customer is uh, in and that kind of service in other words the customer experience doesn't go for at all so i think that will be a that is the first i would say a use case uh, which is relevant for our industry second is from the marketing perspectives also perspective also that how do, how does the marketing use the data of the right customer data for the right offers, the right uh, I would say solutions uh, to which are given to the customers which may have a uh, two three different uh, i would say dimensions one may be from the revenue perspective the revenue can go up uh, second may be again i didn't understanding customer concerns also because the whole customer support uh, you know uh, uh, phase of the life cycle of the customer is very important for us to really understand it because that will that can only happen if ai can give you the you know the history history about the customer on the fly for the call center agents for the people who want mm -hmm. to serve them so it becomes very important that ai really connects the dots behind the scenes uh, similarly you have got safety use cases where actually before you can uh, you know a human can know about an issue which can become a potential safety issue for the aircraft ai can help you in that so in other words you can move, be a lot more proactive than reactive uh, and your decisions can be a lot more based on the data so the and some of the decisions can be purely data driven some can be you know data uh, inference by the data so i think those those are uh, some of the things i would say the other use case which is uh, important in our industry is the operation side of it because many times you get uh, you know the disruptions in the whole uh, schedules uh, the changes so how do you manage the communication part of it how do you manage the rerouting part of it how do you manage the uh, you know this making sure that the customer get updates so these are the uh, area where what i would say use cases there uh, you know ranging from your uh, engineering to flight operations to ground services to commercial to safety to area even fuel fuel management is a big area for us which actually ai really helps to make sure that we you know use the right proposition of the fuel because every uh, optimization there really helps uh, from the cost perspective. So these are some of the use cases uh, which are helping much. Sure, but no, thank you. And uh, thank you for bringing up the uh, kind of the operations uh, uh, part. I guess that was um, while most of us articulated uh, you know, a lot of other points, this was, I think, uh, quite critical, Vinod. Um, because when we kind of uh, look at implementations of AI, we look at, okay, you know, what else could be done? But obviously the um, 
the the core bread and butter, if you will, of the business also kind of needs to be enabled. So thank you for uh, for bringing Don't that up. If I may uh, share Please. some more use case. Please, Umay. So over the past few years at Cinecron, we have uh, developed several uh, what we call as accelerators. Uh, these accelerators uh, are financially uh, are developed in our what we call as pin labs. Uh, since we work with the financial services customers, okay. pin labs are areas in the areas like AI, data science, blockchain, wealth management, regulatory compliance, uh, insure insure tech, uh, and buy sign and many more. Mm -hmm. So, in these uh, uh, use cases, our AI based accelerator programs are uh, are designed in such a way that they, they can make use of advanced statistical analysis and structured and unstructured data, right, in order to develop a real time dashboard and powerful application. For example, we have developed something called as a robo advisor. The robo advisor is uh, it gives a wealth management customers and investment areas where they can invest uh, to maximize their wealth, right? So this is again the AI-based accelerator program. Uh, and this brings our experience in, uh, in, in mining the, uh, the data that is being fed to derive at solutions. And similarly, credit risk uh, predictive analytic, uh, accelerator. Now these, this will again, for if you are lending your money, right, what are the risks that are involved in in uh, uh, in in the clients that are using this kind of services, right? So it allows credit providers to proactively identify uh, unanticipated credit risks, right? So these are again some of the use cases in financial services. Um, also in the wealth management or uh, in in banking, for example, client onboarding using AI, right? You don't uh, the client order uh, onboarding is seamless. You just scan your documents. Uh, through your mobile or tablet um, and using OCR and NLP, right? So the entire onboarding process is automated and there is no manual uh, intervention required for anyone. So this, this helps in reducing the time required for onboarding clients, right? Mm -hmm. um, so these are some of the use cases which I thought uh, are good uh, Quite relevant. examples Thank in you. the financial services. Sure. No, quite relevant, Omesh, and thank you uh, for bringing it up. Um, in the you know, interest of time, we'll um, we'll move to um, Rishad. Uh, I guess the I mean, could you please uh, you know tell us about what was your uh, AI adoption framework? Sure. Thanks for asking this question. Let Let me begin by saying that uh, first and foremost, we need to be realistic about AI. Mm -hmm. Many a times we think that AI can solve everything, which is actually not a true, or we get too much excited about implementing a new technology. We expect that there won't be any failures, or we expect that AI project will work for the very first time, which is not practically possible. There are a lot of hurdles that happens along the way. So my suggestions has always been that uh, first and foremost, we should be clear about the business problem. What is the problem that we are trying to solve? List them down clearly uh, how and when each of them would be solved. Uh, which problem can be solved by AI and which can't? I think that is also a very important element to list it down. And then uh, list down the other elements like the time frame, resources, and the cost that it is going to take. Uh, take the approval and then uh, you proceed ahead with the project. So I think that's the phase number one. The other part is that for AI project to be successful, we need to really look at the end objective and we need to address each element of whether it is people, process, technology, and data. And each of these phase needs to be really monitored carefully. Um, say if we wanted, say if the AI project is for three years and we completed one milestone in six months, list down what all learnings that we had, build on onto that and then uh, move ahead on the subsequent phases to ensure that those kind of uh, learnings can be implemented. Now, the real issue arises after is the after AI project is implemented and which is the adoption. So what happens is we have implemented the nice technology. What if people are not using it? So this also needs to be addressed very carefully as part of the overall AI adoption framework. 
um, which means like we need to have a well documented adoption plan that should have a crisp communication uh, providing the advantages uh, providing all the necessary trainings at each level in the firm and we should define the adoption metrics we should track them on a monthly basis quarterly basis to make sure the technologies that we have implemented how these have been used what are the benefits that we wanted to get out of these technologies are they really giving uh, to to the company are we really achieving those benefits or not so i think all in all all of these components needs to be really taken well uh, for a for a successful ai adoption to take place yeah thanks manoj i hope sure. uh, i could answer your query yep no uh, well articulated rishab thank thanks. you uh, thank you for that um, Rami, i'm going to come to you next um, and how does the future of uh, ai look like and and then before you start i'm going to open this up for um, the rest of the panel as well if you could kind of share some light uh, there that that would definitely help thanks manoj yes uh, the future of ai uh, the dependencies on AI is exceeding day by day. We see today uh, uh, AI in all its elements, from machine learning and neural network, deep learning, uh, based on the uh, format of information, uh, based on the uh, business process itself, the model, we, we are building the AI. So AI, I believe it will be replacing a lot of jobs okay we can find many uh, rules are uh, replaced by ai especially for uh, business process which interact between uh, several departments uh, in automation so today we see the uh, rpa are in place uh, we see digital banks so we are dealing with robotics here uh, we, uh, you can open a complete account bank account uh, dealing with robots so uh, it's replacing a lot of rules. Uh, it will take a lot of responsibilities. So uh, AI will be uh, mandatory in our lives, okay? But here we should consider that uh, a, a human should be more creative, okay? Instead of task oriented. So uh, I believe the world are going to change, okay? Uh, you can find uh, today you see self uh, drive cars in many cities okay uh, underground and so on so here while we are uh, gradually uh, growing with the demand uh, on ai we need also uh, uh, not ignore the human sense because at the end we are dealing with uh, uh, customer satisfaction mm -hmm. not robotic satisfaction okay so uh, ai coming to help a human so I think I and I believe the vision should be go in that direction uh, that we need to build uh, such technology uh, to make for better human. We are creating better human lives, not for uh, robots. OK, so uh, this is what we need to consider in the future while we are dealing uh, with AI. Uh, today, our AI are emerged with several technology uh, in physics. Uh, I have a project uh, uh, several months ago about physics uh, informed the neural network, how we use uh, machine learning in uh, physics, also quantum machine learning. So uh, other technology today are depending in AI because it's cutting uh, a lot of efforts, uh, can predict what should be next, uh, predict about the next steps. So here, uh, uh, AI will play a major role in our life in the future. And we need to take all the benefits of that one. Okay. Well, appreciate it, uh, Rami. Thank you so much uh, for helping uh, kind of put a framework to it. Um, Vinod, what's your what's your take on um, future of AI look like? Yeah. My take is uh, I know that where other people are also to speak. My take is AI will not be a choice anymore. It will be the only way to do business. Mm -hmm. I think the earlier we understand this, the better it is. Technology will mature. It's about the thought process. It's about in which direction you think. It's about getting the house in order. In, in terms of data, in terms of business rules, in terms of competitiveness, in terms of operating model, everything. So 
I think it is the AI is, as I said in the beginning, AI is a business strategy. AI is not a technology. Technology will happen. But you need to do top down to bottom up. Top down is the sponsorship. Top down is the acceptance of this AI as a lever. AI sure. is a strategic lever. I think it will continue. It will continue and you will see that the benefits will be enormous. You touch anything. Because today, if you see that there is not end-to-end visibility, particularly last two years, look at the data which has exploded everywhere. Mm -hmm. And now you need AI is the only technology available to you that if you have got the right, correct data, you can make inferences, you can draw analytics on top of it. And it is going to continue. We are going to be more and more digitized, more and more digital world, and more and more AI dependency. So future is AI itself. Sure, Manoj, thank you. Uh, that helps. Manoj, uh, what's your... Uh, what's your take on this? And then uh, could you also talk a little bit about the risk uh, involved uh, in implementing AI, please? Absolutely. And Manoj, uh, uh, like Vinod mentioned, I think uh, AI is already actually impacted the industry, mm -hmm. right? And many of the industries today, they are really successful. And if you would like to actually have the big impact, the larger impact of AI in the business, Somebody need to remember actually the three C equation, right? Consumer greater than customer greater than company. Traditionally, what has happened, any technology coming to the table, we all IT guys, we bring it to the company, we try to automate some of the processes and feel proud of it, right? But the true impact, the maximum benefit we could get it the moment we apply AI on the first C, which is anything and everything around consumer, right? And that will make the larger impact. And look at all the actually companies, today successful companies, AI has really impacted in a large, uh, AI is really actually redefining the business model. It's redefining the products, redefining the go-to-market strategy and everything. So uh, the future looks like is in any successful digital customers journey, if you apply, that will bring us a great success at shorter time, at less investment versus the value what we get out of it. And the second thing is, it's also the time has come for change of culture, right? Traditionally adopting a technology versus AI, it requires a fundamental shift in the mindset of innovation and transformation, continuously trying something with this new technology, okay? try something, develop something, test with, with your actual consumers, see the feedback, again, uh, continue that loop, right? So I think bringing that organizational change, uh, being actually online, real on, and truly bringing the startup mindset with the AI, that will make a actually larger uh, impact. Perfect. Uh, you know, we'll kind of wrap up uh, uh, the uh, discussion here. Well, um, you know, a lot of uh, important discussions that we had. Obviously, everybody talked about data and KPIs and, you know, algorithms. Obviously, we touched upon the operation side of it. Um, you know, bias uh, being quite uh, high as far as the way we are kind of setting it up. Um, obviously, we need, uh, you know, the high computes of the world to kind of enable AI. Um, so obviously, when I when I try to kind of summarize it, I think you know they put it in good words, and so did Rami and some of you saying you know it's coming, it's here, um, as far as uh, AI is concerned. So as a part of your strategy, I think uh, organizations need to be started uh, start to think about uh, you know how are we going to be all enabling um, AI within our organizations. Well, uh, team, thank you so much uh, for sparing your time. Really appreciate it. Um, we're gonna we're gonna call this a wrap, and uh, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Desai, for conducting this uh, insightful discussion. Uh, lots of talking points uh, today, and lots being learned. I hope you're enjoying uh, your uh, time here. You're enjoying the experience. Do share your feedback, and if you have any questions from the speakers, do type them in uh, to the question box, and we try to pose them to them.